right, here's our walkthrough. Sealer's freshly dried. The revive old stamp concrete cobblestone style. Caramel color dye put over all this, and then a dark walnut antique. And we brush the grout lines in there just to make it pop a little better. You guys remember in the beginning of this video, this thing was stark white, and it was chalking, dusting really bad. And then it was gold. And then we had to change the color. And here's the front entrance. For an old, not so good stamp job, we gave this thing a pretty nice facelift, I would say, for what it is. I mean, there's bad cracking, separations. You see all the cracks, but <clears throat> for our something on the lower end of the cost spectrum, I mean, really. It's not a bad way to, to kind of give it a makeover. Once again, I think this ties in really nice to the front entrance. All right, guys. So we're in the process of working on doing a hand textured overlay around the pool deck and over top of some stamped concrete that's in the back of the house, straight through the back is where the pool deck is. And they asked us if we could do anything with this old stamped concrete, which you can tell it was not finished very good. It's not in good shape. It's cracked all over. Um, repairing the cracks, grinding it down, doing an overlay was not in the budget. So what we did is we actually uh, cleaned it really good, made sure all the sealer was gone, and um, Bob has taped and masked everything off. So what we're going to do is actually spray exterior dye, acetone dye, over this, and we're going to use a sand color. It's kind of close to the grout lines right there. So we're going to spray that dye over this, and then we're going to spray dye over this whole sidewalk and it's basically the same color will go across all of this and so that same sand color go on the sidewalk these two stamp jobs over here um, <clears throat> and then once all this the dye is put down here what we're gonna do is come back and you know obviously we'll just seal the broom finished sidewalk but we're gonna antique this old these old stamp jobs that are not in the best of shape but at least we can kind of give them a facelift with some dye and then uh, antique it and seal it so it'll give it a new look so um, it is a cheaper alternative than trying to grind it and do an overlay and it still freshens it up unfortunately you know you're never going to get rid of the sandy and worn out spots or the ups and downs or any of the cracks it's just kind of when you look across it the appearance just seems to be a little bit better and not you know sidewalk is a stark white and every not, everything here is kind of tans and browns and so uh it'll really tone this down and make it match the house a lot better all right guys so we've got this stamp concrete um we got all of it clean we got etched we got the sealer off we got the old residue of the powder release off and we've got our exterior acetone dye mixed up so what we're going to do is just spray this in a circular figure eight organic motion you do not want to do straight lines and uh, we'll show you how it works And I like to put a nice coat on, but then I keep in mind that when I come back tomorrow, I'll check it out. And sometimes what I do is I'll actually take our sealer and I'll put like 10% sealer in with like 90% acetone just to get a light coat on there, just to get us an idea of what it's going to look like sealed. And that'll give us a better idea if we need another coat. Um, obviously, when this dries before you seal it, it's not going to look like what it looks like sealed. But you can see the color change already and see kind of how it's getting that, that sandy uh, cream color, if you will, on there. And we're also going to add an antiquing on top of this for, for traditional stamp concrete to kind of bring this thing back to life. This is a cost effective way to kind of give it a facelift. Alright guys, so that's it. We're making our progress down this sidewalk here. You can see the, the nice color difference compared to their house. Every, this is going to blend in really nice instead of like a stark white colored sidewalk and that's going to really refreshen up that uh, that stamp concrete. Well, we ran out of material. Bub is mixing up more. But look at this white up against this house. Look how much better that blends in. So much nicer. 
really takes I mean it just ties right into the house and takes you to see the stark white down there it doesn't match anything and this really just blends in really nice so really easy to do we're gonna mix up some more and keep going so we're here with our customers we got this acetone dye put down yesterday and what we're doing now is trying to pick uh, between one of two different antique colors so we have it's funny these are both called walnut but they're different manufacturers so this walnut is just a dark dark uh, almost dark chocolate brown and this is more of like a milk chocolate and so what we did is we went ahead and brushed out so this is the the lighter walnut this is the darker one and this is the best way to get them to kind of see what it's going to look like sealed the problem is when you're doing this it looks like it's coloring the whole thing like that that antique color but once you seal it then this base color pops back through and all you see is the darker in the low spots and that's it so um this is kind of the closest thing you can do to trying to get an idea of what antique you want all right guys what we're doing here is we're basically just putting down our liquid antique there's all kind of different brands that have different names there's easy teak there's permatique there's but it's all basically liquid antiquing so i'm basically using a soft bristle brush i prefer this brush there's other ones that work good as well but i'm just basically being very liberal and putting it on and once i put it on there i wait about 30 seconds or so and what's going to happen is the pigment is going to settle down into the lowest spots so what i do is after about 30 seconds if you notice out here, I have some pretty good puddling. So what I'll just do is I'll reach out here and kind of flick it out. And so that way it's a little bit more even. So like I said, you have to wait until, see, same thing right here. It's starting to puddle up. And what that is is because they stamped this and it was not a good job. I mean, there's a lot of ups and downs. So we have to watch for all this puddling or it's going to look unnatural. So as it settles like that, I just kind of lightly flick the pigment out of there. And you know, there's a couple spots over here. Just kind of flick those out. And if I have a bald spot, it's easy. All I do is just kind of shake a little bit more. Just shake a little more out there where it's not wanting to stay. And uh, I think one of the main key components, components, especially in the summertime, is to make sure this is damp. You don't want it saturated, puddle and water, but you do want it damp so this stuff kind of can flow and not dry up. If you do this in the direct sunlight in the summer, you will get brush marks. So make sure you keep a damp surface when you apply this. All right, and this is after the antique is put down. And this is a much more consistent texture, so it's really going to look a lot better than that front patio that was, man, just way, way, way on the bad side. So, uh, yeah, once once this thing dries, um, you could tell the difference already. And that sealer is going to enhance this and make it look close to brand new. Never brand new, but close to it. All right, here's our first pad that we antiqued. It's drying. You can see how spotty it looks. But you can see, if you can see where it's starting to dry, it really gives it that natural two-tone effect. And we'll let this stuff dry all the way. <coughs> and we may have to go out and dab a couple spots with some rags. Um, typically, what I do is take a microfiber pad and I, once it's all the way dry, I buff the tops. And what that does is it gets a lot of the antique off the high spots and gives it more of a tumbled rock or two-tone effect, which in my opinion looks a lot better. It looks a lot cleaner, and you can see that light base color stain that we put in a lot better. Um, so we'll see how this looks. It really just depends. We'll let it dry. Well, it seems I've been saying this pretty often recently, but we've had another wrench thrown in our gears. We put this dye down. We antiqued it. I sealed this little side over here. And they don't like the color. They don't like the base color. This sand color, they don't like. It's a little gold. And I agree. It is. It's frustrating. But now we have to recolor that. Um, so we're going to go with, the, with the, more of like a medium brown. It's actually called caramel. So what we have to do now is, luckily with acetone dye, that's one of the reasons I wanted to use it is it will stick to this sealer um, and i just put a thin coat down but just to kind of give them an idea of what it will look like but uh we're gonna remove this antiquing and what we're going to use to do that is basic clr calcium lime and rust remover We've done it before it works really good so we're going to try to scrub that antique off so that way when we spray our caramel dye 
um, it's penetrating into the concrete and not just sticking to the antique and then we'll re-antique it after that and we'll be putting the caramel dye on top of this sidewalk and um, I've got a sample over there where, where I have some different colored dyes and I'm gonna actually spray the caramel over top of the sand because it's gonna give you a different appearance if you spray caramel on white because now you have this goldish undertone so you, that's gonna give you a better idea of what it's gonna look like um, it's frustrating but it's part of the business and it's just kind of knowing how to fix it and like I keep saying with our YouTube stuff we want to show you guys the good the bad the ugly it's not just the highlight reels it's the reality of decorative concrete and how it works and we're going to show you what we do to, to fix this and change the color and kind of give it another facelift so um, like I said it's frustrating you just kind of got to roll with the punches and um, hope this one turns out the way they expect and at some point you've got to you got to understand i mean you know people pick a color and you know there's only so many times you can do something before most people would put a change order in um and i could have done that but we're gonna we're gonna try and fix this for them we want to make them happy we're doing a huge overlay in the back around the pool deck so um anyways we're gonna work on getting this stuff off and we'll kind of show you how that clr works on that antique all right, so we got our four to one ratio. We got the bottom filled up to the one line with water. And now we're just gonna put our CLR into the one line here. And that's gonna be an exact four to one ratio. Perfect, yep. So now you know you have four to one. You're asking why are we mixing up such a little bit on something this big and we got two little stamp jobs over there. Well, what we're gonna do is try a spot see how it's working see if our dilution rate is good we're not going to just dive in and take some kind of big guess at this and just slop it on in the middle we're going to try it somewhere over to the side you notice here's the front door and i already sealed the edge over there so our next best spot is kind of over here hidden out of the way so we're going to pre-dampen this grant this uh concrete just kind of rub it yeah let's do this whole whole square right here there you go Yep, so you just want a damp, not a whole bunch of a standing water. That's perfect. Okay. So this stuff says with CLR to go um, basically half and half or one to one. So we're going to put this on, see if it fizzes and see if this takes off the antiquing like we want. We have done this on a 7,000 square foot driveway. We had to change the antique color before it was sealed. And so it says to scrub on there, and then I think it says to let sit for two minutes. Two minutes, yes, sir. So, um, I mean, you can see it sudden up, and basically we're just going to hit that spot and let it sit on there for roughly two minutes, and then and then see how good it comes off. If four to one isn't strong enough, and you got to remember, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time. It's just like a sample. You don't want to make it too perfect because you have a lot of stuff that you have to try and take off. So you kind of want to scrub it on there. <laughs> Like kind of quickly, efficiently, and hard, and see how it works, and then uh, wash it off and, and go from there. So it's been about two minutes. Shallow scrub that in. He's gonna just kind of flood it with water and see if it take the antique off pretty good. So we only did kind of this one by one square here. We'll let him get that all the way off. That's that's honestly. That looks way better, actually. Yeah, I mean, you could see yeah, yeah. this one little square compared to all the rest of it. How good that got that off of there. Yeah, so that's you know, I mean, Shallow has a good point there. I mean, you know, it recommends half and half, one to one, and you don't want to etch down. Now, this is an old concrete job, but you don't want to use more than you have to. Our our goal here is just to get off of this antiquing, so that way our dye will stick back to the concrete. So you see how good that worked. That's why it's important to always do a sample. We do those on everything we do. So now we got a method, we got a process, and they're going to take off and get this stuff off here. All right, they got done with that CLR. You can see this spot over here that we sealed along this edge, like three foot out. You see the antiquing didn't come off. The good thing about the acetone dyes, it will go back over that, but... Um, and it'll it'll stick to that sealer and then we can actually antique on top of the sealer as long as you lock it in But you can see the difference in how that CLR got that antiquing off <clears throat> So we kind of have like a, a fresh slate to start on and you can see over here 
where I sealed the sidewalk. I just put one full coat right here so they could see the actual color. And I got a little bit on the sidewalk and you could see where the antique didn't want to come off, but that's because the sealer is there. So you can see it came off everywhere else. Sealed, it did not. No big deal. The acetone dial will go over that and then we'll antique it. So um, they got this one done. And then these two um, side pads right here. That CLR is a ticket if you ever have to remove uh, antiquing, that's for sure. Okay, so our sand exterior dye was a little too gold for them. So they decided to go with caramel, which is kind of like a rich brown. Luckily, I already had this sample board that I already talked about. And if you notice, this is just a broom finish um, overlay that I did. And I sprayed some different dyes here uh, for, for a job we had in the past. And we just so happened this sand color here is this color. And so what I did is instead of spraying this caramel on top of gray, I sprayed it on top of the sand because it has a different underbase to where it's going to affect the tone. So if you're ever in a situation where you have to change the color, you want to spray your new color on top of the old color to get a better look of what it'll actually look like. So that there is caramel they're happy with that color we're gonna go with it so we're about to start putting down this uh, acetone dye we got our caramel mixed up in there and we're gonna spray the whole sidewalk we're gonna spray the stamped concrete okay guys so as I've mentioned we have to change the color from sand into a darker brown this particular color they picked is called caramel and what I talked about earlier in the video is that we seal the section over here so as you walk this way you can see how this unantiqued, washed off, unsealed area looks compared to where I'm standing that is already sealed with the antique. Obviously it's sealed so you have to do a different method on getting that sealer off of there which is either done by chemicals which is a really messy job or by media blasting. Um, it's very difficult to get sealer off so we just kind of sealed on the edge so they could get an idea of what it would look like. Um, so now the nice thing about this exterior die is it penetrates into this sealed concrete. So we will be able to transform this sealed concrete and unsealed concrete and then re-antique over all of it and then lock it back in with another coat of sealer. So I'm going to show you how this caramel goes down. It's a darker brown and uh, I'm going to take off here. All right, there's the caramel exterior die put down on unsealed concrete. And I'm gonna walk around over here and show you what it looks like on sealed concrete and how it penetrated into the sealer and gives you more of an idea of what that color is gonna look like. Okay, here's our one stamp pad that we sprayed with the um, sand exterior die. UCLR scrubbed it off which the goal there was mainly to get the antique off. And then here's the caramel sprayed down so you can see the difference in color. Once again, it's not sealed. So when we antique and seal it, that's really gonna pop. But between that, that it's sprayed and this, big difference. Always start your spray on the outside and then you're just gonna go basically right over it. And you'll see the dark color hit and then immediately in like four or five seconds start to turn light again. Well, that's because it's not sealed so when you're spraying this you're looking for the darker color more of a consistent look now with that being said with acetone dye or exterior dye you are going to get a modeling effect there is no way this is not going to look painted it's even like water-based stain where you can make it more of a consistent look this is going to have a modeling or variation of the same color and kind of movement in the dye um, there's no way around that. So if, if your, your clients are not okay with that, then you need to go another route. The reason we picked this acetone dye once again is there was sealer already on that stamped concrete that most of it was gone, but any remnants, we made sure that this stuff will penetrate into that sealer and get a better look. All right, so our acetone dye is now dry. So what we got to do is we got to put our liquid antiquing down on top. And you can see what we've done. We love this tool right here. This is a Milwaukee backpack sprayer. We just pre-dampen the surface so that stuff glides and kind of moves around a little bit easier. 
you definitely want to dampen your surface if you're doing this in the heat of the sun. It, you will 100% get brush marks. So always just pre-dampen it. It helps it slide around. You can kind of see some of the spots are drying a little bit. So I'm going to go spray a little bit more. And remember, you're always keeping an exit strategy in mind. So what we're going to do is our sidewalk is already that's tone dies put down you can see it from here see the color looks really nice um and then we always have an exit strategy so what we're going to do is work our way straight back off the edge and our other two stamp jobs are over there behind us so i'm going to start putting this down and so you can see kind of how this goes so i'm going to kind of splash this out and just move it around All right, our antique is down. You could see um, the white spots right there. That's basically just the antique, which is a cementitious pigment. Has cement in it as well as a pigment. Um, it is starting to dry and bond to the surface. All right, so it's the next morning. Uh, last video we posted yesterday was us putting down the antiquing. We got a lot of rain last night. That's why you can kind of see the discoloration right there where it's darker. You see my wet footprints. We're trying to dry all this off. Um, but yeah, you can see the antiquing in the low spots. Obviously when we seal it, it'll enhance But I just want to show you guys Over here where this was sealed where we re-antiqued over it and it did bond I mean that that it will stick you know, obviously you can't leave it like that You've got to seal back over that antique and lock it back in. It's not a preferred method, but it is possible So none of this was sealed um, It is all caramel dye put down in antiques just trying to dry it out and um, we're gonna put some sealer on this here in a little bit as soon as I'm confident that it's dry enough and you can see the different color that this turned out putting that caramel over top of the sand it's not as gold and for some reason, it's kind of a lighter hue on my camera than it is in real life. It's actually a little bit darker brown than it looks on my camera now. But maybe that'll change when I post it on YouTube. I don't know. But uh, you can see our antique over here. This is where it got wet last night from the rain, just trying to dry it out. And what we'll have to do is mix up some of this dark walnut antique that you see here. And we're going to have to mix up like a heavy dilution rate, almost like paint. And what we'll do is we'll go through here with uh, some paint brushes and paint these grout lines. Even though there's not good texture, you can make it look like it has good texture. At, you know, just looking across it as appearance to where, you know, obviously it's not going to lay down in the high spots. That antiquing is going to run to the lows. So uh, we'll make that look way better just by brushing that on there and we'll show you how we do that. All right, you can see all these spots right here where the antique didn't go down because it's a high spot. There's a lot of them through there. So what we're doing, you can kind of see me and Brittany are basically painting those in there. And what we did is we just took a little bit of water, um, just a very little bit of water, about that much. And we put probably a half a scoop of that comes in that antiquing in there so this should really a half a scoop would do a half a gallon but we're trying to make it pretty opaque and we're just kind of painting those across there and uh it'll be a much more cleaner it'll make it look like the the stamp had good impressions in there even though it doesn't let me dip this in here get some of it off and then basically i'm just running this through here just like that Now it makes it when that dry when it's dry and it seals. See, we've already done some of these. It's gonna make it look like it, you know, the antique was where it was supposed to be. And it's gonna make more definition between the stones. So it's a nice little trick if you're trying to rehab. Or if you do a stamp job yourself, you don't get the impressions that you like in certain spots. It's it's just a quick, easy way if you get your whole team just to go through and kind of brush them in there. And it really adds definition to it when it's done see bub spraying this stuff down we got our milwaukee uh air pressure gauge on there that keeps it about 40 to 45 psi 
Just putting a nice even coat on there. How's that? All right, it's looking pretty nice. See that caramel color? And he's gonna turn here in just a second and work his way out. You can seal the unsealed concrete here, see that? And then he's just gonna keep working his way right on back. And then he's just gonna keep coming right on down the sidewalk, a thin coat. And uh, that'll be three coats. And just so you guys know, we like to thin our, our sealer down. So this is, uh, this sealer is already 15, 16% solids, but we put a little bit of acetone in there just to help it help it flash and that acetone helps it drive down further into the concrete so it's not just so superficial on the surface. All right, so we're to a stopping point right here. Now what we're gonna do is go up in here and seal this stamp concrete. Obviously, you don't wanna just seal right across that and then have to walk across it even though this dries pretty fast. So he's gonna go ahead and put a thin coat on here and let's watch this transformation. A lot of guys like to seal and back roll. Personally, I think if you get your pressure right and the right type of tip and sealer, we have had no issues um, just spraying. As long as you use the right technique and spray it down nice and thin. Once again, exit strategy in mind. You can see that we stopped right up there at that control joint and he's sealing his way. Look how much it richens that color up. How much nicer that looks. All right, here's our rejuvenated facelift of some old stamped concrete that we recolored. Once again, this was caramel dye, which was the final color, and then we added a dark walnut antique. Really ties in nice to the color of the front door and the shutters here. For a bad stamp job um, that had no accent color, was very faded, and on the lower end of the cost spectrum, really really turned out nice you guys remember this sidewalk was stark white it was chalking and dusting really bad they were tracking it into the house picked a sand color it was too gold so we washed off the antique that we put down here's the finished product here and we washed off that sand finish in the antique then we went back back over it with the caramel dye For not so good stamp job, it's a heck of a transformation. Once again, this sealer is just dried, just enough to walk on, but this project is a wrap. It is complete. Let us know if you have any questions. Appreciate you watching.